people think that Abby's mean, bro, you have no idea. Which dance teacher expected you to be perfect every time? Hey, guys. Hey. Welcome to our new show. Say it with me. Out, Out of line. line. <laughs> Welcome to our show. Five, six, seven, eight. Say it with me. Out of line. <laughs> I'm Bryn. I'm Kelsey. And we are your hosts, your fun Yay. hosts. We're so excited to start this today. And we're going to get right into a really good topic. Yeah. First episode. As you guys can see, we have a whole new setup, whole new vibe this going on. This is like on. so this professional. Like, yeah. No, this is great. I'm really excited. And I hope you guys are excited too for we're all really of our new stuff. We're really excited to chat with you. So for today, we wanted to talk about, like, we felt like ever since like young age, we struggled with being a perfectionist mm -hmm. so we're gonna talk about being imperfect today like it's okay like it's not that yeah. deep life is life yolo that's <laughs> what we think you know what i mean honestly yeah I stand are you by on that. my wavelength but like 99 percent of people like struggle with this problem so i feel like it's very important and i feel like maybe you guys can learn from our experience maybe we can learn some from you guys too so i don't know that's what we're here to talk about i'm yeah. really excited so we wanted to start from the beginning, like how this whole mentality of you need to be perfect, you need to be on your A game, like mm -hmm. you're not allowed to mess up, how it all started, because at least for us, it stemmed from a very young age very, yeah. because we're dancers. Mm -hmm. And as a dancer, I'm sure you know, if you are one, you know, you have dance teachers growing up that are really hard on you that you are not allowed to like you're not allowed to mess yeah. up ever. And it creates you having that same mindset because when somebody's telling you over and over again to be a certain way, yeah. you are telling yourselves those same things. So like, exactly, it's almost like we're half the problem, but. Yeah. So like when um, you're in a studio dancing, whatever, and you have to learn a piece of choreography, you have to do it exactly you how You are they expected say. <laughs> to do everything perfectly. And if you don't, missed opportunity. It's Go like, on. Per um, sorry. <laughs> if you don't do it right, it's like, push-ups burpees absolutely. you're go absolutely. sit on the wall like you're in trouble yeah deep shit if absolutely. you don't if you mess up and that's just like the way it was i mean us as dance teachers now we're getting ahead of ourselves but we're kind of the same way and it's just something that i feel like got in our brains to the point where it was like you have to break the habit you know it's not just going to go away one day you have to actually sit there and decide like okay wait it's okay to not be perfect at this though you yeah know? exactly and so I think back to like a very specific time okay. when I was younger. Bring me there. And, you know, you're expected to win when you're growing yeah. up at a studio. And when you have a teacher that's super hard on you, you're expected to go to these competitions where you dance in front of strangers mm -hmm. and you're expected to win and you're expected to be perfect. Yeah. And so I remember so specifically like it was it was nationals. Or nationals. some super big competition nationals week is always like yeah it's like, and it's really stressful and especially ugh. as like a young girl like yeah. i was put under a lot of stress just like in vegas or new york like hey yeah and then you party yeah exactly <laughs> and so i messed up you know when you do a solo or even if you played a sport like and you're expected to do something and you fail to do it it's like it's the worst, worst feeling, feeling ever. I'm sure other people can relate. We were talking about how gymnast and cheer and like every sport ever, you make that one mistake and it's like all those weeks, hours, blood, sweat and tears that you put into it is like over. Yeah, it's like none of it matters. Yeah. Do you know what and I mean? your coaches and your teachers like don't always help because it's like it's it's a letdown to them too. So they're like, <laughs> yeah, you drop the ball. And it's exactly. just, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's and where so it all starts. When you like mess up and then <laughs> have you ever had teachers give you the silent treatment for messing up yes and i cannot explain to you how much it hurts i uh, i honestly would rather a teacher scream in my face than just silent treatment because yeah. that's when you're like oh i i'm fucked up bad. it just confuses like, you and then yeah. when you grow up in that environment and then now that you're like older you like expect people to do that to you yeah. and then when they don't and confront you it's even scarier yeah do absolutely you know I mean? <laughs> absolutely I mean, I remember when I was little, one of my first solos, it was Going Bananas. I don't know if you ever saw that one. <laughs> going Bananas, okay? I had a banana on my butt. It was super cute, whatever. <laughs> I remember my instructor that did that solo for me and was there for me. I I was maybe, maybe four, okay? Like four or five years old doing this solo. And I go on stage and I forgot it. So I literally stood there and like picked my nose and like did absolutely <laughs> nothing and then like got off the stage. And my four-year-old mind was like, yay, that was so fun. And I remember getting in so much trouble, well, like yeah. so much trouble. But like, 
that's where it starts. I was so young and like, that was when I was like, oh, wait, I'm not allowed to mess up. Okay, I got to take this a little seriously. Yeah, like, exactly. Which, I mean, I don't mean to like, neither of us are trying to sit here and like on like our dance experience. Yes, there's some things that helped us a lot through life and there were some things that weren't. But like, overall, dance helped us out a lot. Yeah. But this is just one of the things that you're you're kind of left with. You know, going from like studio life to then yeah. I had to like go on this. I had to go right. on dance Being moms, on right? TV is probably, yeah. <laughs> and so imagine like doing that, but also it being broadcasted on national TV. Yeah, like if you mess <laughs> up, then all these people are going to see yeah, you. Yeah, it's not just your Ugh. teacher seeing it. It's like hundreds of thousands of people, yeah, millions absolutely. probably of people seeing it. And, and so it's not a good feeling. then like I've, my mom always, you know, I'm just a perfectionist. I just am. And I, yeah. I feel like everyone does a little bit have that in themselves. And so Especially I think the show low-key made it worse. <laughs> I mean, a hundred percent. Yeah. No, like a hundred percent made it worse for me yeah. because in the back of your head, it's like, oh, I just like fucked that up. And then you look over and then there's a camera there and you're like, oh, well, they just saw me mess you're up like, too. Well, that's <laughs> like, okay, all these people are going to see me mess up. Uh. And then like people comment about it on social media and then they bring it up and then it just like makes it. And you're like not so allowed to live worse. it down. I mean, I remember even at the studio, like on that same note, like if you mess something up in a big, important like dance and then you come to the studio and everybody's like not mad at you, but like mad at you for your mess up. Like I can only imagine like the comments on from no from TV. I'm glad that I was never on TV. The closest <laughs> thing to that was. I did dance on this kids team for the Phoenix Suns. They had like their cheerleaders, obviously. And then like they tried out this kids team for a while. It's no longer a thing for obvious reasons. But <laughs> when I did that, I remember I had this like duo part where I was supposed to like run and like catch my friend. Uh -oh. Didn't catch her. Fail. And so I was like, I don't even know how old, but I like remember I like tried to get get over it like no big deal and went throughout my whole dance and I thought it was fine. I was like, oh, you can even tell like it's fine. <laughs> I mean, we could go on and on with stories for days about our experience throughout that. But yeah. I do feel as though that is kind of where it starts. And then as we grow up, obviously, we're going to get more into that about like the problems and the stuff that it causes later on in life, like in high school and in, you yeah, know, that's, everyday life. So like after Kelsey and I kind of stopped dancing when we were like in our teen Around years. Around the same age, yeah. Yeah, so like going into high school, stopping dance completely, you know, it was very weird because you have that like niche. That's your thing growing up. Mm -hmm. And then once you go into high school and you don't have that anymore, it feels like a part of you is missing. Mm -hmm. And so then with nothing to hold on to, except like these like mental notes that I took when I was younger. Yeah. It's like, it was super hard, you know, it's super weird. Cause then you fixate, like re you fixate on something else like that thing of always having to be perfect for everyone it stemmed into like trying to find friends and mm -hmm. trying to be the Absolutely. perfect fit for all these friends and yeah. it just like it didn't work and I was miserable and like now I realize like obviously Ugh. like you don't have to do that and so I, I just mean, hope yeah. if there's like anyone listening or if you're in high school or if you're in college not that we like have experienced college yeah, I mean but not really no it's not that serious. Yeah. Like I took things so seriously and I stressed myself out yeah. over fine. Like being liked, like, like yeah, approval. being liked, having approval from yeah. other people just, mm -hmm. and it, you know, it made it not fun. Yeah. It made it miserable. And so I think now that we're older and once you like move out and you're trying, I feel like it changes the game. Yeah. Yeah. And we're like, we turned 20 this year. So we're like next almost week? in our, yeah, she's 20 next week. So but good. we'll be in like our early weird. our yeah. early 20s like ew that's ew. disgusting <laughs> as we literally are turning 20 we're like oh we're in our 20s now yeah like. but it's just you know everyone puts a lot of pressure on you like oh this is your time you make like the most important that's decisions true. of your life that it's is like, true oh, thank yeah. you for that like you're making it a lot better yeah we but, haven't really talked about that much lately but that's so true especially yeah. from like older women i want to say they always come to me i don't know about you but they're always like oh, like 20, that's the time you got to live. That's the time that you got to really experience it all. And that's the time, or there's the opposite approach of now you got to start settling down and having kids. It's like, no, and it's like, absolutely not. Everybody <laughs> just wants to have a say on what you're doing. And you know, if you're on the right like path and like, I don't know, yeah. I feel like it's okay to just be off and it's okay to not be just like everybody else. And that goes with that 
per- perfectionist, like you don't have to be perfect. There's really no exact perfect or mold or box that you need to like fit into, you know? Yeah. And like, that's what we thought in high school. No, I agree. Did. And I think nowadays, like our generation, it's, you know, everybody's on their own wavelength, like mm-hmm. all the time. Like, yeah, it's not like, back i feel like back then because you know when like older people come up to you and they're like oh yeah, back, like this is your time it's like back wait, in the day it was like there it's was like a specific not, yeah. you know what i mean no because we have oh my gosh we have some friends that are our age or like even younger than us like having kids and getting married, married. like what oh hell no and like yeah and we that just is had to such, learn to be okay with like yeah that okay that specific <laughs> thing that she just said like all of our friends getting married and like Ugh. settling down which that is weird for that's weird to me that's so weird but that kind of stuff stresses me out because it makes me feel like i'm not where i'm supposed to be yeah which that is not true yeah. which then again like that all ties into the like i need to be this right now yeah. i need to have x amount of money by this age i need I mean, to be living here by yeah. this age and it's like hey you need to like calm down like look at the yeah. bigger picture stop stressing out yeah it's matter because of it's like okay out. it's really okay yeah. i promise you because you know like I mean? think about it this way when we were kids like we were told that like oh by age 10 you're gonna have all these skills and you're gonna be able to do xyz and then when you reach this age oh look what she's doing she's the same age as you you need to be that good like it's always just matched with like age or just like i don't know and i feel like we naturally do that same thing now but we're working on it a lot and i was gonna say like it's easier now to look back on your childhood days and be like, oh yeah, that's so stupid. Like, why did I care so much? But, it, but I but still do care. In the moment is the <laughs> hardest time. Care. Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> no, that's, that's funny actually. I always but look back and I'm like, we're like, oh my gosh. I'm like, bitch, why were you crying over that? And I'm like, okay, well I would cry over that now. So it's Two fine. biggest criers right here. Used to be her, now I'm the crier. I think I'm just taking the ease off a little bit. I just like don't cry anymore. I used to cry all the time and I never used to cry. I used to be soulless. This bitch cries all the time. I'm crying all the time recently. (laughs) I'm not that sad, okay? That makes it sound so bad. No, she just like... I'm a perfectionist and when my life doesn't go my way, I'm gone. Over the smallest inconveniences. Yeah, no, give me a big problem and I'm like, meh. But then like the tiniest little problems, I'm just like, my life's over. Brynn thinks it's funny because I'm just like, well that's it then we're just done then i guess there's just no p- that's literally how you act no like, solution to my problem example and Brent's like she'll lose a phone charger in the house right okay <laughs> i'll let it okay phone charger lost i hear slamming cabinets she's like i'm literally it's lost i'm never gonna find it again and i'm like okay no let's i'll look literally for look it, at and then and I, go, find it. I guess i just don't have a phone charger anymore and she's like kelsey and guess who finds it every time me. okay well moral in of like the story seconds <laughs> every time without fail <laughs> I'm not that crazy, okay? But that being said, I feel like, yes, that affected our childhood a lot, but then I feel like we should talk about a lot going into high school because that's when I feel like it all affected me the most. Really? Was high school. I like, because tell me if you can relate to this. When I quit dance, I it wasn't by choice. I didn't like decide to quit dance. It just like, you know, life and situation things happen. So I was no longer able to dance. But like, I was also in a place in my mind where I was like, so exhausted and so like over it like I love dance and I'll always have a passion for dance but I was in a place where I was like what's the word I'm looking for like you're burnt out drained yeah burnt out like I just got burnt out and I was done and so then I left and went to high school and was like oh now I get to do all these things that I've always wanted to do I was always mad I was busy with dance and now I have the time and I was trying to make all these friends and do all these things and experience it all and get invited to everything and be I don't know, just be like that person that I always wanted to be. And I realized that that's not always possible. And it was so like hard for me, especially like I feel like junior high into high school. It was so Mm -hmm. weird going from like, oh, I wanted this. I wanted to, you know, take a break from dance. But now like I miss it. I just feel like that was when we kind of lost ourselves and found ourselves 87,000 times. Agreed. Because I think a lot of girls our age, you know, you go through high school and you're trying to find that group you fit in, you're trying yeah. to find your personality and your identity and you're growing up really fast, I feel like, in high school. Yeah. And so I feel like for me, it was just, you know, I struggled a lot in high school just because yeah. I had, I wanted everyone to think of me as this perfect, like, 
perfect. Like I, mean, I never, yeah. you know what I mean? Especially everybody wants to be perceived as like, there's nothing wrong with me and yeah. I'm perfect. So then like, especially coming out of the show into high school. Yeah. Like I literally went from filming a show every single day to going into my freshman year of high school, just like jumping just like back into school. school. Yeah. And that was crazy for me. Just like yeah. such a, you know shock to like the system just like what is going on and so i didn't want anyone to think of me differently and i didn't want them to judge me and so i was always tried to be super careful about what i said who i hung out with what i was doing what i was posting and i got in trouble a lot of the time because i was still trying to find myself and i probably did some stuff in high school i wasn't supposed to be doing and everybody (laughs) always says it's my fault everybody this is the bad influence bad influence i think we talked about this in a previous episode but like when we decided with a bunch of our girlfriends to like go to victoria's secret and we all bought matching thongs for fun like we were just like (laughs) oh my gosh we're like oh my gosh womanhood whatever we're like 15 years old yeah and And we go home and we like take a picture in the mirror in our like matching underwear and no different of a pose than we would in like a swimsuit which is like yeah essentially the same thing mind you this was on our own time posted on our private stories like for a reason we weren't trying to just like i don't know be perceived in any way like that but then the next morning we woke up and ashley was not very happy we didn't even know yet we woke up and ashley was the one that was Dance like mom ashley was what not is happy. this and we were like <laughs> one of our friends in high school this is the other thing is yeah you never really knew who you could trust for this reason this girl i guess was like i don't know jealous I'm going to assume yeah. and like took a screenshot of that picture and sent it to one of Bryn's fan accounts and posted it everywhere. So you clicked her or my tag photos <laughs> and it was like just so bad. So which bad. It's like not bad because we kept it private, but the way it was like everywhere made it like embarrassing. Yeah. Because it was and then like, it's like because of situations like that, yeah. it like really makes you like before i used to do something i'd be like worst case scenario like you say like kelsey's worst case scenario always it's situations like that that make you think like that yeah and so i think safe yeah i think now that we're older and we've like grown up and live on our own it still happens to me like i still go to make a decision let's say for example i'm trying to think i don't know Hmm. okay moving (laughs) out moving out is such a good example yeah so you know me and kelsey used to fight a little when we were younger (laughs) and so obviously like her being my best friend i was like let's move in together this will be perfect this will be great and then my mom was like okay you two really need to sit down and make sure that's a good idea because i know that sometimes sometimes you guys get into sticky situations brenda and i were really good at like being such good friends that we spent all of our time together and then you like we got to a point and this kept happening where we like were so sick of each other and everything each other did or said or anything was like pissing each other off. Yeah. So then we'd get in this huge blow ups and like at 15, it's huge. It's huge. Like blocking each other on Instagram, like making it a big deal. Yeah. And so moving in was a big decision because it was like you, we had to be logic with it and be like, is this really going to be a good idea? And like we have a full contract because in all reality, <laughs> like we are really close friends, but you never know what comes your way and so it's like better to be safe but but anyways you can carry on exactly so i just think now as an adult like you know looking back as a kid like the reason why i am the way that i am is because of the way i was raised and because of the way that teachers talked to me and because of the way like i handled situations like just I used to be such a stress ball and like literally itch my arms and like freak out if something didn't go my way. And so now (laughs) when something happens, like if I don't know, I get a flat tire on the side of the road and it's like, Kate, well, that wasn't supposed to happen today. It's like, yeah, you can't beat yourself up over it because only you can control how you respond to a situation. And so I think I've learned a lot, obviously, since I was younger, how I respond to stressful situations. Being on the show helped me you know, learn how to respond to stressful situations. And I'm really like grateful for it. Obviously it's like not ideal, like having that much pressure on you from a young age, but it it makes you, yeah, it makes you grow up really fast. And I'm really glad that I did that. Yeah, absolutely. I like, I look back on that a lot of the times, like the way that we react to every situation is stemmed to everything that happened in our childhood. And like I was saying earlier, I'm so grateful for dance and I'm so grateful for everything I experienced. 
but that doesn't say that there weren't times that like I believe traumatize me to this day. And oh, like yeah. that's a great a hundred, example. A hundred percent. If I like if little things go off in my day, I'm a very structured person. So like it drives me nuts. But I feel like now more than ever, moving out probably helps. But I feel like now we're really good about like just like taking a step back and trying to like take it one step at a time. And I feel like we're finally in a good place where we're like doing good career rise, doing good. I was going to say friend wise, but we but never have friends we because <laughs> friend. we got our dogs. Oh. Yeah. And that's my it. Friend. But just like that perfectionist mentality, I think has really like chilled out this year, yeah. at least for me personally. Yeah. I've really learned how to handle myself and because I'm it like is proud of all myself. <laughs> in our control. It's all a matter of making a decision. You're not going to wake up one day and be like, the perfect version of yourself. It's yeah. a matter of making a decision and taking steps to get there. And like, I don't know. I feel like I've been doing a lot better about yeah. just like living it day to day by day. Yeah, taking not, it day by day. Like you're yeah. in control of your own life and it doesn't have to be that big of a deal. Like yeah. just little things. Like if my hair doesn't look good, I will be in a bad mood. And it's like, okay, well, you need to just like, <laughs> and in reality, I it's promise like, you okay, it's well, not that deep. It's fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Life is just hard sometimes. Don't we? <laughs> You guys, we literally have a date tonight. Well, it's with, not a date. With actual men that, that we, we met. met in person. Oh my God. Wow. That never happens. Ever. Never happens. I've never had that happen to me. I'm like shocked that this is reality. We like, these boys came up to us the other night and just introduced themselves, whatever we uh, talked. Okay. Hi. I'm a freaky, stockish, psycho, crazy person and I found them via Instagram. So found them. <laughs> dm'd one of them and now it's turning into like us hanging out and the only reason i'm going is because this hoe is going with me well duh i won't go i'm by always myself. down i hate i have to drag her with me dating i hate it she yeah. loves meeting new people loves no i hate it so our much. day is in t minus 30 minutes <laughs> we'll have to update you next time we talk to you and let yeah. you know how it goes this is just I'm for fun <laughs> like it's really not that big of a deal but it'll no it, it is be fun. it's a huge deal I hope you're not watching this. I hope I don't get the ick. I hope I don't get the ick. I forgot about that. <laughs> Fuck. I got it. Wait, it's like Love Island. I got a text. I got a text. <laughs> you know what they say in their We British love Love Island. We got a text. We got a text. Everybody come here. We've received a text. Oh, got a text. Message. No, but actually though, we got a text. Yeah, so <laughs> we're doing a new segment on here where you guys get to text us, which is super cool yeah so we get to answer your questions you get to share maybe your story times mm. you know let us know what you just want anything that yeah. like because i know a lot of you guys like to reach out via dm or comment and stuff like that and we can't always see every single one so this way maybe we can reach them a little bit better and we want to help you guys out in your situations we may not know it all but we can yeah. try so if you would like to text us you can text us at 310-742- zero zero eight three slay write it down don't forget it write it down jot it down write it down mental note so today we're gonna be answering some of your questions and then obviously next time we see you text us please and you guys should really text us so that please please text us one. please be our friend to text us mm, this question's for Bryn. you ready for this yeah i'm ready I'm sure everyone is wondering where Bryn Rumfalo is now. What does your life look like now after Dance Moms? Okay. Give Good me point. a walkthrough of what Bryn Rumfalo's life is the like. The rundown? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I think after the show, I got very burnt out on dance. And mm. I did. I quit dance for a little bit. And I'm glad that I did. I'm glad that I took a mental break from dance. Mm -hmm. But it really made me realize how much I missed it. Absolutely. And so now I'm on a elite dance team, which is super cool. I get to travel with, you know, some of my best friends and we, I still get to compete and I still dance, which I'm really grateful for. But I'm also a teacher, which you are too. But like mm -hmm. being a teacher yeah. now, it just like heals the inner child in it me really that I was does. when I was little. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So like things that I was super sensitive to when I was a young dancer. I really make sure that I'm yeah. sensitive to my I do kids' the same needs. Same thing. I go like above and beyond to like help out the kids that I feel like I was. I'm like you yeah. were me when I was young, and I needed this when I was a kid. So hopefully we make a difference. Yeah. I hope. So it's just like such 
such a full circle moment to like be a teacher now, like be on the other side of things. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I'm up to. Every day I teach seven days a week and I do a pot. I do a show with Kelsey. We do our pod (laughs) and we literally watch Love Island and we eat bagels and we get Starbucks and we hang out with our pets. That's literally life. That's what I'm up to with Naomi. We love her. We stand. (laughs) You got a text. Oh, (laughs) did being on Dance Moms make you more or less of a perfectionist? definitely more like a thousand percent more mm. and i think it's worse when you can watch back the clips yeah do you know what i mean yeah so like and our roommate loves to play dance moms <laughs> yeah so for time. example my roommate loves to play dance moms i hear it in the background in the shower <laughs> all the time and you so i'll listen to, to clips Lee. and i'm like ugh, like why did i sound like that why did i say that you know, and so but you were just a kid. I know. I think it like definitely did make me more of a perfectionist, though. Just like being aware of my surroundings at all times, like making sure I don't look like a brat or making sure that I didn't be I wasn't being perceived in a way that I wasn't yeah. or as little things like making sure my hair looks good or making sure my knee is straight in my solo, like just stuff like that, yeah. which I think being filmed made it worse. I mean, I would have to agree. Yeah. So much worse. (laughs) Like imagine like all your fuck ups being on camera for two years. Yeah. No, I don't ever want to go back and look at that. (laughs) I mean, there's like random little clips of me as a child for like dancers, YouTube pages when I was little. I'm like, hi, my name is Kelsey Millar and I'm a dancer. You're so cute though. Gosh, it's not cute at all. Which, ooh, which dance teacher expected you to be perfect every time? So I think you can relate to this. And I'm sure if you're a dancer, you can relate to this. Ballet teachers, Mm -hmm. especially Russian ballet teachers, are the most strict teachers I've literally ever had. Like, and people think that Abby's mean, bro, you have no idea. No. Like if you walked into class with a wispy, like a hair. Like your hair out of place. Snipped off. Snipped off. Cut it off, rip it off. I don't care. And, and like yeah point shoes if you have ever experienced point shoes i did it for like five years of my life they are so difficult to get on and like you have to use all these different like bandages on like specific toes that are blistering or like there's just five thousand steps to getting your point shoes on and they would always be like all right everybody you have 60 seconds to get them on and if you're not <laughs> that far then you're doing five thousand burpees in your point shoes and you're like okay and you're like, like nine and you're like oh yeah my got gosh it. <laughs> and you're just like ex- expected to do it which yeah. i get it but like no it was yeah. so traumatizing i feel like ballet was the one room where you walk in and there was no expectation other than being perfect yeah. like you're not allowed to make any mistakes and i feel like ballet is a lot on appearance yeah. so you're standing there your stomach's in your butt's in your hair is done like your chin's and up your you, shoulders down and if you don't look the yeah. part the teacher wouldn't pay attention to you yeah like plain and simple like yeah. If you didn't, if you weren't skinny and if you weren't tall and if you didn't have your hair done right, yeah, you got kicked out of the it class. It was just like, yeah. Like she would literally look at you and be like, all right, what are oh. you, what are you doing here? And you're like, you just don't say anything. And then she's like, get out of my class. Yep. Like that literally yep. hap- that that happened happens so many times. All the time. One too many times. Yep. Literally way, 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 way too many times. Yeah. That was traumatizing for sure but you know what we made it out and now we will, <laughs> i will never do that to my ballerinas never oh my your little, little ballerinas i can't there's no so way so cute Bryn, didn't you say in your last episode that this was your last time talking about dance bombs <laughs> yeah <laughs> i did but i have to give the people what they want you know <laughs> as much as i don't know i feel like there's a difference between like talking about the show like what i experienced on the show and like there's a difference between like how it made me into i am now yeah so like i i could talk you know i will talk forever about how it made me into the person i am today which i think that's why it's good we like talk about it on here because i think it did like shape me in a way yeah and so it's not as much talking about like my morning routine being on the show and like stuff like that but I think it, now that we're older, it's like nice to be able to just like get off my chest and talk about how it like affected me. Yeah. Cause you know? I mean like that comes along with you. Yeah. Like that was one your experience. You and know? I've, I've watched a lot of the other girls talk about the show and 
you know, I totally agree and respect with everything that they say. Yeah. And that's also another good thing that I think the show gave me was just the girls were so cool and like awesome. And I'll never have anything bad to say. That's about like them. lifetime friends, like f- making friends at a dance studio. You will never have any closer friends than that. It's like, so true. So it true. really is insane how quickly like I bonded with all those girls and how much I like didn't want to be friends with anybody else because I was so content with like my I little. Know. Well, that's how we friends. met. Like, that is true. We, we became friends when we were really little. And my mom told me that it was funny because we were the only two crying in dance class Figures. and not wanting to go. I got a question for okay, you. For me. Mm-hmm. Okay. How does it feel to not get a perfect score? Ugh. Like in a dance, like a group dance, a solo, <sighs> just like. Personally. I mean, like your number one goal, especially going to competitions, is just score being as high perfect as you can. and being told you're perfect. And so, like, the goal is to get the best score. And so, when you're like told that you didn't or that you were so close to getting a perfect score or whatever, or like when you're point two away from being first place, like, no, it's one of the worst feelings because like I was saying earlier, like you work so hard for so long and then you go there and then you didn't, yeah. you didn't do it. You failed. Yeah. So, or, you know, it's when, not you're, a good feeling. when you're waiting on stage, when they do like awards, you're waiting on stage, you're like, you're like this. And then they announce you as like eighth place and you're like, okay, well I want to go home now. That yeah. Sucks. No, <laughs> it sucks because like, my teachers always like taught me, luckily, Alexa Moffat taught us that like, no matter what, you always tell other people good job and you always congratulate other people and you'd be grateful for what you had. Well, I didn't listen. And I was always sitting there like, if I got Howdy. eighth place, you could see it on my face. You could see me and I'd be like, I'd be looking at my mom in the audience like, I hate my life. I want to <laughs> go home. But like, I should be grateful that I even got eighth or whatever. But like, still, it was like, ugh. Or like when you're going up against somebody specific that you know that it's like tough and then yeah. they beat you and you're like. Yeah. So kind of like related to that question, it's like, I feel like, how do you feel when like you see someone else get that perfect score? Do you know what I mean? I mean, it depends how much I like you. I mean, like <laughs> somebody at my studio, yes, I'd be so, I'd be really proud. And it is like a, because you, I feel like a, all of us dancers kind of can relate to each other because we all work really hard. So I can look at that and be like, wow, that's really cool for her. But Agreed. if it's somebody that I'm a little bit jealous of and maybe somebody that might be better than me and I'm threatened, then if I see them win, I'm going to be like, Ugh. yeah, but also use it as motivation to work harder. Agreed. So, okay. This is like kind of a funny question for you. Oh Lord. Do you think I changed after being on dance moms? <laughs> mm, I feel like yes and no. Naturally. I feel like we all change a lot throughout that age True. in your life. So like no matter what you're going to change, I don't necessarily think it was because of the show. Yeah. But I do feel like it's definitely a whole different person because we like when Naomi was playing it the other day and like I'm watching Brynn on the show, it's like she was so quiet and like in her own bubble. And I feel like ever since we like reconnected at 14, 15, like I've known nothing but yeah. like what's the correct word? Like a confident Bryn. Like just, yeah. I've never seen that shy Bryn that's like hiding. I've never seen her yeah. since. So I like, was very shy. Yeah. Like very just like in my own world. Yeah. Never really talked. You came home and said, yeah, no, I'm not doing that anymore. And I I feel like that's why we're really close friends though. Yeah. It's because I, I, I needed that energy. I wasn't, okay, I was going to say emo. Not emo. Emo as an emotional. I was an emotional child. It's emotional. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay. Another question. Okay. Why did we change the name of the podcast? Mm, good question. I'm Would glad because like I want to touch on this. This yeah. is like a good question. Yeah. Go so I it. think that we just wanted something to be more personal to us. Mm-hmm. Um, out of line, just like it can literally relate to, first of all, so many things. As dancers, get your ass in line. <laughs> Don't be out of line. Don't look different. Look the effing same, right? Get your ass in line. Right. That should be our next merch. That should be. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Okay. But then it's in the sense of like, you know, it's okay to like yeah. be figuring it out and it's okay yeah. to not be in line with like everyone else around you. Absolutely snaps. So it's like, snaps. you know, it can go both ways. Do yeah. you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. So I'm glad we changed it. I think Me it's too. like relatable i know i think it fits us a lot more and like we were asked like why did you make it double take and we didn't have an answer for that and like that's a problem because we want this podcast to be very personal and very us so i feel like now it fits us a little bit better and if you like it great if you don't still changed it so thanks for watching thanks (laughs) but yeah yeah, i think that was 
Yeah. Well, we just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. And if you made it all the way to the end, we love you even more. You're such a homie for that. You really are a homie. And if you want to text us next time, be sure to save that number. I don't know if you want to read it again. Should just I read it case. one more time? Yeah. I'll read it again. Next time, if you want to text us, <laughs> please text us at 310-742-0083. Slay. And we will answer all your questions. Slay. Give us the juicy ones. If you guys aren't already subscribed to our podcast, you should. Please subscribe. Please. You know, text us. Thank you so much for watching. Like, yeah. We're really and excited to get this started and just keep chatting yeah. with you guys. And if you guys want to follow our everyday life, we post on TikTok nonstop. It's actually Every annoying. Single Feel free to follow us. Day. We'll link it below. And please follow at Pierce Media. You'll see a lot. I literally slip and fall on my ass. So you should go like watch you it. You should go watch at Pierce Media. <laughs> it's Absolutely. really funny. It's great. Yeah, it's really good. We have a fun time with Pierce. <laughs> Next week, we're definitely going to be diving into the dance world. Our studio, Deep. our teachers, we're going to be name dropping, studio dropping. We're giving you guys all what the you've been asking for. All the club You've dance been begging, tea. we're caving. XOXO. See you. Bye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>